guys, this is James from the Apple Project. Thank you for joining in on today. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for, for just being a part of the conversation. Again, thank you for joining on the Free Agent Army. Yes, because we are warriors for God. We are always fighting the good fight of faith. So with that being said, I wanted to um, go into a, a, a testimony video today of a young man that I met years ago, and I have been so impressed with this young man's love of God and the way he, he pours out his life for the kingdom. Right now, the young man is over in Africa and he's just, just out there spreading the gospel. He's on missions. That's what he does. It far reaches of Africa and not afraid, not even afraid. I mean, I have been so impressed with this man's tenacity to get this stuff done. But anyway, I will let him tell his story. So, and with that being said, I also wanted to mention, uh, please go over to angelpen.com. Um, the, the, the posts have been, man, they have been jarring. I've been reading some of these posts about the ladies on this 28 days of godly marriage. It has been like, wow. I mean, just getting really into it as a married man and hearing from a women's perspective. Um, but next week, I do plan on doing a video uh, from for uh, the post I will make for this week. So my video should come out next week that will talk about what I've read. Just some points that really stuck out to me as a man. Go to angelpen.com. The link is below to her blog. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to the manufacturer of this t-shirt. They sent me this t-shirt right here and it says, Jesus saved my life. This is a really nice t-shirt. I think I've uh, washed it maybe two or three times and still holding on to a nice black. But also this t-shirt can be personalized. So go ahead and check that link out below and get your t-shirt. It's a Zane Collections. A uh, really nice t-shirt. They were nice enough to send me this t-shirt. So go ahead and check them out and hit that uh, link below. So, all right. Without further ado, here is David's testimony. This is geared towards young people with the way that I shot it. This is a part of the I'm Free Project documentary that I started shooting back in 2011. Look at God. You know, we started on this and... I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be able to share these stories, to be honest. So share, share, share. Get people to uh, talk about this. Get young people to see this, that when God takes over a young person's heart, that they can do some mighty things and they can change. They can be changed and be transformed. You don't have to stay the same once you come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. All right. Remember, he and he alone, who? Jesus is Lord. Um, growing up for me was really rough, you know, um, was, they have like the the best upbringing, you know. So you know, my dad was he was kind of doing his thing, and mom doing her her thing. When I was um, when I was six years old, I was raped, and um, that was you know that kind of that really hurt me a lot. And after that situation happened, when I was um, seven and eight, um, my mom moved was you know somewhere else, and in that situation, I was like in a very torturous situation, like you know getting beat and smothered, and you know just being treated really badly yeah and you know even though this stuff this stuff happened to me and and ultimately I didn't know the Lord at all and stuff like that so it kind of pushed me into a whole nother direction with my life like I started to I started to let that motivate me in a point of being successful and you know trying not to be what I where I come from and you know I held on to that pain I, because I had all that stuff bottled up in me I, I drew really well I was very constructive like I always was doing something crafty or something like that but I never like to not be doing anything like I like to take my mind off certain things and off memories and flashbacks until I got to a point where I didn't think about it at all anymore you know I was kind of yeah, just to push that stuff, not to think about it. I actually locked it away somewhere really far back in my head where I only went back to that spot to peek at it just to give me a kick of where, where I don't want to be and, you know, and kind of let that be my motivation. I was raped by a guy and as I, you know, then a torturous situation happened by a guy and a girl and that was at seven and eight so when I got to as I got older you know everybody always said oh David you know I used to be feminine and not like over the top feminine but I used to have feminine tendencies and um everybody used to always pick on me about that and you know like even my mom kind of said a couple like everybody just had something to say dealing with that so it did open up thoughts and after I remember what I've been through what happened to me that really I can honestly say that really did make me feel like okay maybe this is just who I am or 
that's what I, that's all I attract and that definitely opened my eyes up to the um, homosexual lifestyle as I, as I got older. You know, I started to go to like clubs and I, I met friends for the first time that were gay and we, I just started to be, 18 was the age I it was introduced to the lifestyle and was it just kind of thinking about it. And about didn't tell my mom what about everything and like until two weeks I was about to move to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, she was like, um, rumors started to go around and she started to, she asked a question, she said, um, are you gay? And I was like, why do you care? You know, why do you care now? Like, you know what I'm saying? And so when she said, tell me, and I told her, her reaction was kind of like, it, it wasn't a good reaction. It made me feel, it made me feel like she hated me and also my whole family about that. But my, my reaction to that was so negative and made me go even, do my own thing even more because I said, why do y'all care now? You know what I'm saying? Y'all didn't, and then that's not to her about me being um, raped and everything at, at six. Yeah, so it was like a big old. <laughs> I was, I was, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, I am, I am gay. It's, it is what it is. And um, I, I was, I came down here for college. Um, wasn't interested in school at all. Messed up really bad because I was so busy. I had, you know, teachers and people was buying me stuff. I really, I really can say that I'm so thankful now, just just where I'm at right now, being truly not just delivered from homosexuality, but delivered from just attention and the lies and just like I was feeding myself all this stuff that I thought gave me some some type of purpose, you know, come from all that bad. Since the change, it was um, it was. It was learning self-discipline and self-control. It, uh, it wasn't so, once I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and it was like an instant change, but I started to see literally the light. Like, he brought us out of his, out of darkness into his marvelous light. I really believe that because I was like, I'm, I'm just drinking, I'm clubbing. I'm, I'm living, but not really living. I'm making sure I look, I, 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 I'm no boosters. They, they stealing stuff for me, trying to make sure I look good. And I'm just like, I just was so made up. And once I started to shed all the, all the drinking, all the club and all the smoking, all the sex, all this stuff that don't matter, that is when I really started to wake up and just really have a piece of, a piece, not just a piece of mind, but a piece of my heart. Like, I started to receive a peace that was just crazy. Like, I really didn't understand it, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> because I was like, man, I can I can have fun and not come home drunk, come home with different people, you know, just, just lying, cheating, stealing, just all this stuff. Like, it's so much more than trying to look good for people. And I started to realize life is more than, to more than, more than people pleasing you know what i'm saying and the lifestyle one thing that that made me fall into the lifestyle so hard was because i felt accepted yeah but just because you feel accepted don't mean that that is good for you and that is you know for god's purpose for your life so even though i was accepted it came with a price it came it came with my life like you know looking you know, just, just trying to be somebody I'm not. And I really was. Like, I was so conceited, stuck up, arrogant, rude, boastful, just just crazy. And I was everything that, that God wasn't. <laughs> That's a good question, because I, I learned that every day. But to maintain, how I maintain my change, is really stand at the feet of Jesus. Really wholeheartedly, you know, not just staying in my Bible, but really staying literally just in constant like relationship with God. And, and I had to, you know, you gotta be separated. So I had to, you know, I had to ch change my location of Georgia. I had to change my number. I had to, I had to really, Honestly, I had to isolate myself from everything that I came from. And, you know, I was at, in church and stuff now, so I had Christian family and everything. So I just really had to separate myself, you know. And I found, I found myself, like, when I stumbled, like, it's because I went back and, and, and had one foot in where I used to be and where I'm at now, you know. So, and, that, and it really tried to snatch me back in.
I tell somebody it's the toughest thing, but the Bible tells us, you know, Jesus told us to count the cost. You know what I'm saying? Look at, look, you got to sit down, you know, and literally count the cost. Like the Bible tells a story about, you know, don't, like if you build a building and don't look at your finances first, you're going to construct it, but you're not going to be able to finish it. Everybody's going to laugh at you. So even before, like even, I, I read that scripture as a Christian, but I had to really sit back and say, okay, what is living the lifestyle for Jesus is going to do? And what is living the lifestyle for myself going to do? And I had to literally write it down. Like no clubbing, no drinking, no, not saying, I'm not saying I'm going to be perfect but being separate no no lukewarm no nasty sites no you know well pornography keep it real no no uh secular music i had to cut all that stuff off so i had to count the cost you know club i like going to i used, I used to like going to the club and doing my own thing getting drunk but i had to count all that stuff lost so i can live for god so it's it's very difficult but it's more easier as you know the process as i go as I, as I, you know, grow in the Lord. The freedom that I have in Christ is, compared to the freedom I have in the world, is just, it's really joy. You know, like, I feel like the freedom I had in the world had strings attached. It had my life, my health, you know what I'm saying? It had, it had, it had all of me. Like, I didn't know who I was. My identity was the world. But when I got saved, then Christ became my identity. The freedom, that I, the liberty that I had in Christ, well, it, it, it was no strings attached. It seemed like God has my best interest at heart. It's no confusion or noise or it's just, it's just, it's just peace. Free, like freedom to, to live out your dream, freedom to, to live who God created you to be, live a lifestyle of, of your purpose, you know what I'm saying? So that's what freedom, the two different freedoms feel to me. David is so free. <laughs> I'm, I'm so free. I'm, I'm so free and it's it's really a breath of fresh air. I, I know I know who I am now. You know, I'm not my clothes, I'm not my relationship, I'm not this world. You know, I, I am free. You know, I'm 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 free to, to be like Christ. You know, I'm free to live for him, I'm free to 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 please him and it's just it's really good. I I'm 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 so free. <laughs>